I'm not actually done with Jewels of the Oracle. The initial playthrough went through everything on hard mode difficulty because I wanted to really explore the puzzle mechanics and then relax them later for an easy mode playthrough. And also because I wanted to prove to myself I could solve this game on hard mode. Point is, it is time to take it easy. 14 or 15 out of the 24 puzzles have an easy mode version. I take it that the House of Krida doesn't believe in making things easy as they are the ones who the Oracle described as devising and creating enigmas every day. I do notice, however, that the House of Kazalam is a bit nicer in regards to offering easier versions and they fucking better be because they gave me the hell that was Pandita of the Seventh Mountain. Each house has at least one puzzle in it that has an easy mode version. The question mark is Parody of Jalam. The online walkthrough, which I should point out, has just a few errors, such as not recognizing the easy mode version of Hall of Order and Succession and getting the number of possibilities of four Pandita of the Seventh Mountain off due to forgetting about the number zero being divisible by seven or the number zero being divisible by literally everything else. Nevertheless, it does mention the possibility of this puzzle having maybe initial conditions in easy mode that are easier to work with than in hard mode. Recall that the puzzle is randomized and the goal is to get the same number of units in water, of water in each field. I am sure you are expecting me to say that I looked into it and clarified whether that is true or not. Of course not. That sounds devilishly difficult to prove and I really don't care. So let's do the more fun stuff. Literally everything that isn't blurred out. Although we should probably start somewhere. Some puzzles are made easier by pre-doing some things for you, such as giving the answers to some of the variables in the Valleys of Al Jabara, or removing parts that made the solution more difficult. Uh, the mechanics and the puzzle itself remains the same. Others keep the mechanics but provide a different puzzle. A few change some of the rules themselves. One of them is not technically easier, it's just different. And then one of these easy mode puzzles goes ahead and arguably makes the bloody thing more challenging. I'll look at Hall of Hidden Links when my sanity meter is higher. For now, let's start with these four. Path to Mahiman, the maze. There is an easy mode version of this, but the maze itself is the same. For an instant, it almost looks like there are no changes. We have a jewel on the front face, and we have to find some way to get it. With the maze unchanged, the same path we used before will work just as fine. In fact, it's probably still the best path. So the question remains, how exactly did this puzzle change between hard mode and easy mode? Well, let's try to take a look. Remember how in hard mode we had two jewels to get. Let's take a look in this particular mode. I'm surprised my little um, paper cube is uh, still working. I would have thought it would have been smashed by now by accident by some kind of paper ruffling. Still, it's proving to be completely helpful right now. As you recall, I built a paper cube that I will show right now that lists all the different paths from different sides but doesn't show the actual maze for each side. Good for getting a rough estimate. Now, now we are on the face that had the second jewel right over there. That jewel isn't here. Now, you may think that that makes the puzzle easier. After all, there are less jewels to get. But the path I'm going to take here, with a small exception because I kind of get screwed up a bit, is actually the same exact path that I take in the hard mode version. The jewel, in fact, if we skip ahead a little bit, the by the time we get to the point where we'd otherwise go backwards in order to grab the what would be the second jewel, we've already made it most of the way to the first jewel. In fact, 
you can say that the second jewel is a small detour on the path to the first jewel. Hard mode um, doesn't really make things much harder. The second jewel is really, because it's on the, it, I understand how it can be a little bit overwhelming being like, oh, there's another jewel here that I have to get. But when you look at the big picture, it really isn't all that difficult. It really isn't all that different. Let me just get this new jewel and be on my way. Uh, I guess I'll put it back. I don't really need it. Funny thing, I didn't actually know you could put the jewels back until I started doing the easy mode LP. I was just clicking up there for some reason. It was like, oh, I discovered something new I didn't know about for all the several years of my entire life that I actually own this game. But we learn something new every day, don't we? Anyway, upon putting it back, we're gonna go and take a look at another puzzle. A puzzle that actually has a much different structure to it and presents a unique challenge in easy mode. Already, the puzzle looks a lot easier than it did in hard mode. We don't have two separate puzzles, essentially, a left side and a right side. I mean, we do have a left side and a right side, but they're part of the same puzzle. It's not two separate entrances into the same hole, just one. So, our main goal in the beginning, as it was in hard mode, is to start getting some balls into the hole, just at least one, to start opening things up, and maybe the rest can slide into place. We already have a conundrum here. Easy mode doesn't just mean give me. Easy mode can still be rather difficult, unlike Path to Mahiman, where it was pretty much the same basic way we had to go through things. This still gives us an interesting problem to solve in the beginning. And once again, it involves having to move balls out of the way in order to move a target ball into the hole. And we have to do it in a way that does not make the puzzle unwinnable. If I try to move any of those balls downwards to push the one on top out of the way, I end up in a situation where they've been pushed on the, the side and they can't move anymore because they're together. For example, if there's two balls close to each other, neck and neck, right at the edge of the wall, we can't really push them away from the wall anymore. Uh, the ball I am pointing to at this moment could be pushed down. Um, and technically the one at the top could be moved either left or right, but um, we have to decide which way to move it. We can't really move the, if we move that ball down, we can't really move the one we're facing right now to the right because then we just create this lock of four balls. Sure, there's an ope, there'll be an opening in the middle, but that opening would be completely useless to us. We wouldn't be able to get to it. So we need to move that ball we're facing right now out of the way. Let's try the left side. Let's think about trying to move it out of the way here. If we set up these balls here, maybe we can move that to the left and put it in a position where we can push it back out again when we're done. If we can do that, then we can just bring it back in after we sunk the first ball. The problem is we can't really move this ball down. If we move it down and try to move this one down, we're going to end up with the ball stuck to each other, unable to move again. And we can't move that ball to the left because it's against the wall and we can't push it further into a more central area in the bottom because of that. Our left hand options aren't looking too good, but our right hand options are looking a lot better. Over here, if we take the ball that's kind of sitting in the middle here and push it down, we can still move it back when we need to, but by moving it down, we can place this ball here. Now this operation is very easy to reverse. We can push it right back out and push the ball downwards, upwards again. But critically, it's opened up some space for us. We have more space in which to think now, and that 
if there's nothing else you can think about, that alone makes it easier to try to conceptualize what the next move would be. And right now, we can see what the next move is. If we move that ball down from earlier, now we can move the one on the right further to the right and then have the ball that we were originally thinking of moving to the left take its place. After that, with this staggered line that we can easily knock the top parts off of and then move the bottom parts to the left and then push them in, we've solved this puzzle. Of course, we haven't really finished the puzzle completely, but unlike hard mode, this puzzle really only has one difficult part in the beginning. Everything after this is pretty much just a strict routine of moving the balls into the hole. Not really much you have to set up, not really much you have to think ahead. Just find the next closest ball and try to get it into the hole, and that's it. As a result of that, I'll be taking another Phantom Cigar break. Don't actually smoke, I do not wish to condone it. It's, I really would rather stay alive. This is very, very similar to how the path to Mahiman worked, where it has the same structure, but it changes the locations of some of the items. However, unlike path to Mahiman, easy mode really is much easier. For comparison, here's the hard mode version. Notice that the starting locations for the, the blocks are a little bit different. This is huge because now we have a block that needs to go into the bin right above the bin it needs to go into. In hard mode, that would have been three suns on the right and stars on the left. And that would have made it all the much more difficult because now you had to uh, bring, well, you can watch the uh, hard mode version of that to see how it differs from this, but this is much easier once you've taken out the, the little what I call give me one then it becomes much easier to just do this puzzle without really thinking I mean this puzzle already you could do without much thinking after you got past the initial um, uh, in after you got past the initial thought process the initial problem the rest of the puzzle just falls into place in a way it's similar uh, to the hall of the Sun where once you do sink the first ball, the rest of the puzzle just falls into place, except it's obviously a lot much easier. Once again, I'm not going to actually grab the jewel, I'm just gonna put it right back to where I found it. If you come back to a puzzle after you've placed the jewel back, the jewel will still be there, you don't actually have to solve it again. So you can solve all the puzzles, keep the jewels there, and then just bring them all back at the end of the game in one gigantic flurry rush. Or you can just not do that. Ah, uh, the peg solitaire puzzle. This was so hard in hard mode, but in easy mode, this is almost a joke. In hard mode, we had this huge puzzle that we had to cut down by mirroring moves in order to get to a smaller solution that almost looks like what we have right now where we can use destructor pegs as I am doing right now. In a sense, easy mode takes away that major step we had to do to reduce the puzzle to an easier solvable state.
as you can see, you shouldn't take it for granted. Now, let's go back to using that one peg as a destructor peg and going around, but instead of jumping over as we did before, see if there's maybe something else we can do. Because it does really look like destroying these works well, or it should work well. Okay, I see. If we move these two uh, in the uh, top middle over the ones in the middle, we end up in a situation where we then have a, a destructor peg that we can move up to the top. That was incredibly simple. Probably so far of all the puzzles that have been done, this is the hugest dichotomy between the hard mode and the easy mode because if you think about it, in those terms where you have to use mirroring to kind of reduce the uh, size of the puzzle and then try to hope that you have a solvable situation and then try to solve that by just kind of intuitively solving it, then this can be said to skip that entire first step and at least you know that that small little set is solvable. The state space for that is exponentially smaller than the hard mode version. Next time, we'll look at how removing two blank slates considerably makes Hall of Order and Succession easier. Then take a look at what I call the two tile rotation puzzles, Horses of Azva and Hall of Ascendancy, where in easy mode they lose the whole tile rotation thing. And finally, we'll see how a different picture and a rule change adds a new tactic to solving Memory of Bandam.